Kyle Larson's coming back for a second attempt at the Indianapolis 500. Welcome back to Break Hard. My name is Matt. So if you paid attention when Kyle Larson first announced his deal to run the double in 2024, the Indianapolis 500, then the Coke 600. Obviously, we all know how that played out. But in the finer details was the fact that this was a two-year contract to run the 500 in 2024 and 2025. But it seemed like things were up in the air after how poorly things went earlier this year back in May. And not that they went poorly on track, just in terms of logistics, the rain at Indianapolis pushing that race late. He doesn't get to the Coke 600 until a little over halfway through. He never even gets in the car because NASCAR bangs the race due to humidity. And then he's left frustrated and sad and bummed out and it doesn't and then he sits in waiver purgatory for a week it didn't really seem like we were sure if that was going to happen again or not well he wins on sunday at the brickyard 400 he hops out of the car he's talking to tv he addresses the crowd and he said i love you indiana fans i know you all love me how about we come back here and try this again next may you can hear it on the clip right here and i know you guys love me too so how about we come back next May and try and kiss these brakes on the Indy car? Now, listen, before we even get into the fact that he's likely going to run a second Indianapolis 500, which is great, did Kyle Larson develop like some sort of Indiana Midwestern draw in his voice right there? That doesn't sound like Kyle Larson. Uh, maybe he was dehydrated. I'm not really sure, but he seemingly was pandering to the crowd with the way he was talking, which was kind of funny. But for Larson, him coming back to run the 500 is absolutely massive, not only for him, the race and everybody involved, but just for in the entirety of motorsports, just to see what this guy can do, because he was really fast this year at the Indianapolis 500, likely finishes top five if he doesn't get caught for a speeding penalty on pit road and which ultimately resulted in a P18 finish. But I think he truly wants to complete the double. Yes, winning the Indianapolis 500 would be great. And if he does that, well, that throws a whole other wrench into his his uh, double plans. But when Wanting to complete all 1,100 laps, I think, is something that he really wants to do. Check that box off. And obviously, he wants to do before he gets too old. So for him to want to come back and run the Indianapolis 500 and then also fly down to Charlotte and do the 600 is great for motorsports. Rising tide lifts all ships, as they say. So for Larson to come back, it's going to be great. He did talk about it a little bit further in his post-race press conference when Bob Pockers asked him about it as well. Like, is there a holdup? Why hasn't this been announced yet? And Larson's like, hey, we're hoping to announce something about this soon. And I think they just have to kind of work through the logistics and obviously get through, get over or through the frustrations of this year. But Larson also went on to say that winning the Indianapolis 500 is going to be really difficult, especially with how fast the Penske's were this year, which I think we all know. Shout out Michael Cannon, even though Penske doesn't actually want to give him the credit over at AJ Foyt for helping them set up their cars and get really, really fast around the speedway. And Larson even mentions that Pato gave it the best shot that he could and obviously still got passed by Joseph Newgarden on the last lap. Still don't think he should have dropped as far down to the bottom off the exit of turn two as he did. I think that scrubbed too much speed where Newgarden didn't do that and carried a ton of speed down into turn three. But this video is sponsored by Driven Sunglasses. Use code BREAKHARD at checkout for 20% off plus free shipping. They are great sunglasses. Shane Van Gisbergen wears them. He's cool. He's from New Zealand. Josh Berry wears them. Ryan Preece, myself. Check them out now. McLaren is definitely the second best team at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway right now. So Larson's not in a bad spot, especially if that team can find some more speed uh, this offseason into next year's Indy 500. For Larson, though, it's one of those career things, right? He said that winning the Indianapolis 500 is something that he wants to do. He's won the BC 39 over at the dirt track, kiss the bricks over there. He's won the Brickyard 400, kiss the bricks at the big track for NASCAR. Now he wants to win the Indianapolis 500. And honestly, that would be one of the biggest feats ever, right? First guy to win a Brickyard 400 and an Indianapolis 500. First guy to win the three biggest races at that track. Obviously, now they've added in that IMSA race too, but it's, it, it uh, you know, maybe eventually we'll get up there. But for Larson to be able to be that guy, yeah, I think that's a huge step in the right direction. So hopefully he can get that done. And hopefully he comes back to Indianapolis next year and runs that race again. I think his confidence level is going to be even higher than it already was in that Indy car. He's now run 500 miles. He has a ton of practice experience. He has a ton of just in-car experience, especially with traffic as well. He's going to understand how to race that race so much better. And I think that could lead to him having a really, really good run next year at the Indianapolis 500 whenever they actually want to get around to announcing it. Listen, we'll sit back and wait for that to happen. On Sunday, though, 
in his in the NASCAR Cup Series, he seemingly used some of the stuff that he learned. Nick Yeoman from IndyCar Radio pointed that out on Twitter, where it seems like he used some of the stuff he learned in the Indy 500 and applied that to the NASCAR Cup Series race on Sunday. Whether that is backing up his corner entry and getting a bigger drive off, setting guys up down the straightaway. I mean, heck, he even passed Bubba Wallace like it was an IndyCar pass at the 500 where Bubba just is on the inside. Larson goes around the outside and Bubba just blips the throttle to let Larson clear him into the corner so that he doesn't lose a lot of speed. Very IndyCar esque type of pass right there. He was setting people up. He understood how to create momentum and get huge runs on guys. And it was one of those drives. Yes, people, some people were saving fuel, but he still drove from 23rd all the way up into the lead in those final like 37 laps on a day where people were complaining about not being able to pass. So for Larson, Great drive, career drive for him at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway on Sunday at the Brickyard 400. Now, can he come back in May, replicate that, and potentially, maybe, win an Indianapolis 500? It would be a huge accomplishment, like I said, so we'll have to wait and see. But for now, let me know in the comments what you think. Should he come back and run a second attempt at the 500? Like and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on TikTok at BreakHard, Instagram and Twitter at BreakHardBlog.